Hello everyone, I'm Jay from TechForce and two days ago I passed my CISSP exam, right? So today we're going to talk about what resources I used and you know how did I do it and my exam experience, right? Many people are asking about it. So I posted my exam result online about saying I passed and all that and a number of people reached out to me. Uh, but this is something I do as well. Um, whenever I achieve something, I usually share so that others can benefit, right? <laughs> so first things first, I am not a security genius as, as such. So take my advice with a pinch of salt. Uh, but he, here it is. I, I have passed the CISSP um, two days ago, uh, 23rd of October 2020, right? Okay. So... My background, I worked in IT for seven years I, as an IT manager and then I left my job, set up an IT support company, I sold that part of the business and uh, same company, retained the brand and focusing on cyber security heavily for the just, just over a year, for last one year. So I thought it would be good for uh, my credentials and also gives me more confidence as well and it is, a, it is a, a, a certification looked up to by a number of people in industry. It's, it's, you know, it's high, considered high regard and it is one of the most difficult certification exam you can take. So combining all those factors, I thought it would be really good for me to go and get the uh, certification uh, you know, right. And um, long story short, as of uh, May 25th, 2019, almost 17, 18 months ago, I have um, attempted the exam. I went for a boot camp um, where, you know, six days they will train you, uh, you know, from A to Z in CISSP. And then on the sixth day, you write at the exam. It's optional, it's up to you. But I chose to uh, did, do the exam and I failed, right? I failed. So I got 150 questions at the time, 151 at the time, and, um, uh, and my instructor was saying, if you get 151, you have to answer the last question right. That will probably decide whether you fail or pass. Anyway, I remember my last question till today, which I'm not going to share here, but um, yeah, I answered, answered it wrong and I failed. Um, as you can see, when you fail, they will give you a um, domain, list of domains and how you did it in each domain, right? So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what they do. And then um, I wanted to do an exam, the exam again in 30 days. It was just when they, when they <laughs> striking it when the irony is hard, right? So, but I, I scheduled it, but I couldn't do it um, because I, I run a business here on a number of things. Uh, life took over and I couldn't do it, right? And then I postponed, but I couldn't do it again. Anyway, so long, um, this lockdown happened in March and uh, our business has slowed down a little bit. And I thought this would be perfect opportunity for us to work on the business also for myself to go and get the certification. And uh, I scheduled my exam. Uh, well, I didn't schedule at the time, right? But I started preparing. I bought um, a, a course, online video course, and I started preparing. I thought I would uh, schedule as soon as um, lockdown restrictions are lifted so that exam centers would open. Uh, because CISSP, there is no remote proctoring, no online exam. You have to go to an exam center and do the exam, right? So I prepared for a couple of months and then I was waiting for the exam centers to open. I think they opened in July. Um, I saw a few dates. I thought, right, well, I'll leave it for a week. I'm not confident yet and then I'll book it. And within a week, all those dates are gone. And the next date I could find is 23rd of October. And I booked it, right? <laughs> um, and two months I lapsed. I didn't study at all. And then six weeks, seven weeks before the exam again, I started studying slowly, slowly getting more serious, right? So I'll, show, I'll, I'll share all the resources I used uh, as well as uh, how, what plan I, I approached and, and uh, how I did the exam and the exam experience, right? So just to let you know, this is the pass, pass report. When you pass, they don't give you any modules as such. They just tell you, congratulations, you, you passed. Uh, I did uh, hear that C IC Square will send you an email with the detailed score report and all that, um, and, you know, after three days or whatever. So, 
um, I'm still waiting, right? So, <clears throat> resources I used. Um, before the resources, right? Find out why you're doing the exam. For me, I told you why I did the exam, right? Um, so, if you have a, a, a why, a strong why, you won't uh, give up. You will uh, get there eventually, right? Um, and then, once you decide to do the exam, first things first, schedule it, right? Book the exam, right? <laughs> Trust me, book the exam. Um, once you book the exam, then you know you have a deadline, you are working towards it, right? Um, everybody is different depending on your experience, depending on your skill level, depending on your um, you know, style of learning, style of studying. You could give it two months, three months, six months. I have seen people given one year. I have seen people given two months or one month as well, right? So it, it, it's, it's up to you. I have, as I said, I prepared for two months, but it was ad hoc basis, um, an hour here, hour there. Um, an average, probably I was spending 45 minutes to an hour every day. And then, but six weeks lead up to the exam, I was spending one hour a day. And then two weeks lead up to the exam, I was spending two, three hours a day and more on the weekends. And a week before the exam, not week, five days before the exam, I was pretty much doing eating, sleeping, CISSP, right? So schedule the exam, make a plan how you're going to do it. What resources are you going to use? I'm going to share some resources just now, but once you pick the resources, how you're going to approach them, right? If you're, read, if you, if you're a book person, if you're a read, uh, person that like to read, um, or if you're a person that like to watch videos, I'm, I'm the later, I, I like uh, watching videos. I'm not a big uh, book person. Make a plan. So you're going to, read this book uh, you're going to finish this book by this date you're going to finish this video by this date and you're going to finish these practice days by this date right so make a plan so the resources i have used um first time as i said i went to a uh, boot camp in the firebrand at Fire, firebrand training i i have some knowledge i retain some knowledge from that uh, especially not technical but about the exam how to do the exam uh, that was really useful uh, and then when I started again this time around, I bought Thor Peterson video courses on Udemy, right? Really inexpensive. I think I spent around 12 pounds per, um, per video course. Each video course had two, mod two domains of CISSP. I'm sure you know CISSP, number of domains and all that. If you don't know, just stop watching this video, right? <laughs> so eight domains, four times 12, and then I bought some practice questions as well from Thor Peterson. And then I have um, bought 11th hour CISSP from Eric Conrad. Uh, I bought the Kindle version, and then I have um, bought official IC Square CISSP practice questions as well. Um, and I have used Sunflower CISSP. I have used, uh, uh, whenever I was running, I, I'm a runner, so whenever I was running, I used to listen to skill set CISSP videos on YouTube. And then finally, I discovered um, Rob Witcher mind map videos on YouTube, free um, CISSP mind map videos by Rob Witcher. Brilliant, awesome guy, awesome explanation, awesome videos, right? I will link all those uh, links in the description of this video, but these are the predominantly um, more uh, resources I have used. Um, I have watched odd videos of Kelly Anderhan here and there. As I like her way of explanation, right? When I was uh, struggling with Kerberos, when I was struggling with um, remembering or, or, or OSI layer uh, protocols and all that, um, and something else, aggregation and inference, <laughs> right it, it it's when i know it's easy now but at the time i was struggling to understand the difference so i watched kelly Anderhan videos and <laughs> example she gave was awesome uh, thanks kelly right so these are the resources i have used um thor peterson um uh eric conrad 11th hour uh, kevin henry bootcamp stuff um, Sunflower CISSP, IC Square official practice test, Thor Peterson practice test, mind map videos from Rob Witcher, and uh, yeah, skill set videos um, from uh, I, I don't know the guy's guy's name, but he makes the videos on YouTube. 
uh, IT Dozo, I have watched a couple of videos, a couple of the, his questions. Uh, Colin, I think his name is Colin. Yeah, Colin Weaver. A um, couple of questions on his channel as well, a few questions. Uh, Luke Ahmed, I have joined the Facebook group of Luke Ahmed Study Notes and Theory. I try to answer a few questions there as well. I have taken uh, his 10 sample questions before purchasing the practice questions. I didn't purchase the practice questions. I didn't purchase anybody else's apart from Thor Peterson and the official IC Square ones. Um, uh, I plan to do it, but I just didn't have time. Um, as I said, I have a business to run and I am doing this on my uh, weekends and evenings. So, and I have a family as well. <laughs> it was tough. Uh, but you have to have that dedication, determination, you have to find the time, you have to have that support. It's not easy. Trust me, CISSP is not easy. Anybody will tell you the same thing. It's brutal. It's a brutal exam, right? Which we'll get to, we'll get to in a minute about the exam. So I believe uh, you have seen this again, right? So um, the approach I have taken, I have, when I started studying for the exam, I was going through, you know, a few blogs and a few videos uh, on YouTube and, you know, uh, some information on Reddit and as well as a few other places, right? But here is the summary I gathered. 50-50, um, right? 50% of the studying or watching videos or whatever, 50% learning and 50% um, practice questions. Some people say 60% practice questions, 40% learning, or other way around. But um, I, I have taken a 50-50 approach. Um, and some people, I have seen comments lately, um, don't do any practice questions as well. I have, I know uh, people who pass the exam without doing the practice questions as well. But it totally depends on the person you are, how, how do you like to learn, right? Um, but doing the practice questions were, was really helpful for me, really useful. Uh, it um, it actually put me in the mindset of the exam because most of the practice questions you do not exam questions are totally different you do not see uh, the type of questions asked in the exam anywhere else trust me they are <laughs> they are brutal they will test you test you like hell um, so uh, I have heard Luke Ahmad the practice questions are closer or Sean Harris practice questions are closer to the exam as well uh, but I haven't done them I have done 10 of Luke Ahmad's uh, sample questions uh, they were difficult first time I scored 60% um, I thought that was good and uh, I have done 70 free questions on um, pocket prep iPhone I think they changed the name now with a um, uh, Mike Chapel, I think the author of the questions I have done there were 70 free I did 70 free um, they, they were okay again I scored 70 80 percent industry average so that was good um, mainly Thor Peterson and IC Square official practice questions one thing I'll tell you as I said you can't see exam questions anywhere else um, and one thing I noticed was most of the practice questions are technical they're asking straightforward questions you know what's the answer for this or this or that or this or that you get you know the answer right but in the exam you have scenarios and all sorts right i can't, I can't share more than that um due to the nda right and also protect the profession um but ic square official ones official ic square exams um practice tests they were <laughs> They were tough. Uh, maybe I wasn't good enough, I don't know, but they were tough. Um, I remember going through all the chapter questions. I was reading the Eric Condor's uh, 11th hour CISSP. After each chapter, I was doing the IC Square Official test questions. Oh man, <laughs> it's, they are hard. And then when I finished the uh, chapter practice questions, I did the uh, mock practical test, where you would have 123 questions per test. There are four different tests. I did the first one and I thought I did really bad. Um, when I clicked the end, I literally closed my eyes and I was thinking I, I get 50, 55 percent or something. But I ended up getting 81, which was huge boost and huge confidence. At that point onwards, I thought, you know, I can do this. Uh, this was uh, four days before the exam. So I did the practice test on Monday. My exam was on Friday. Um, okay, so that's about practice questions and the approach I have taken lead up to the exam 
as I said, um, from six weeks before, I was just ramping up my efforts, you know, increasing 10 minutes, 15 minutes every day uh, here and there, and more time on weekends and all that. But uh, two weeks or two weeks before the exam, I made a plan on what to do in these two, two weeks. Um, I have um, set up the milestones about, right, I need to finish Eric Conrad's uh, 11th hour CISSP, uh, maybe twice. I wasn't able to do it, but um, that's, that was the goal. Um, I got a number of distractions. So hopefully you can do it. Um, and I, I thought, I thought a, a week before or 10 days before the exam, I bought the practical IC square practical test questions. I, I set up a goal to finish them as well, uh, but I only finished about 1,200 questions, I believe. Um, or Yeah, t around 1,200 questions. There are about 1,300 questions in total. Um, I, I finished 1180 before the exam, so I, I missed one final practice test. I did three, I thought that was enough. Um, so that was my approach, and then I set up a goal to do um, uh, the Sunflower CISSP as well. If you have time, please, if you, well, if you're going for the exam, do read Sunflower CISSP. It's brilliant. Uh, if you can, do it two, twice or thrice. Um, Although it says it is 37 pages, um, but <laughs> each page has like tiny text and three different sections. So technically it is more than 100 pages. Um, so, you know, um, take your time, go through it. They were really, really useful. And then, um, you know, uh, Rob Witcher mind map videos, whenever I was having dinner or, or walking to the or work or, or wherever, right? I, sometimes I'm running, I used to, um, watch or listen to these videos um, and the guy from C skillset CISSP he was more elaborated in, in the sense that he was explaining each topic six seven minutes videos each um, so per domain uh, I was I was following that as well so that was good on the exam day right um, the exam was in Glasgow I live in Aberdeen our best part of Scotland um, <laughs> Scotland is the beautiful country right um, so I was I had to drive three hours um, from Aberdeen to Glasgow for my exam center. Uh, I previously, right, few a couple of weeks before the exam, I thought I would drive on the exam day itself because my exam is at one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but um, as I get closer, I just thought, no, no point, uh, you know, taking risk or if car breaks down or whatever happens, I do not want to miss this exam. And because simply I couldn't find another date for another four months, so. <laughs> And I know what happens if I leave it for another four months. I, I, I can't do it again. So um, I, I decided to go night before. Um, one of the things uh, Kevin Henry, when in the boot, boot camp, he was saying, as well as many people were saying, were have a really good night's sleep on the day before the exam and also try not to study anything on the final day of the uh, final day or on the day of the exam or 24 hours prior to the exam. Um, don't, don't, you know, you have enough time um, preparing for the exam two months three months six months and you can't do so try not to do anything you know, um, you know one day 24 hours before the exam uh, just try not to learn try to try not to learn anything new right just just don't it just it causes you stress and pain um, so anyway so I, I, I went there um, I, you know, I had a good sleep I thought I had a good sleep I couldn't sleep till the late night but I woke up late and all that and on the morning, I still, I was still trying to learn, not learn, but I was still doing some practice questions. Uh, I, I had about 40 to go on my goal. Um, I, I'll tell you something, when I was doing the pra uh, practice questions, I set my milestone, I was slipping my milestone every day. <laughs> so I was only achieving like 75% of my milestone and then 25% going into the next day. As I said, I have tons of other things to do as well as this. Uh, so anyway, this was top priority though for the last uh, few days. So then I went into the test center. Please, please make sure you uh, go to the test center much ahead of your time, at least half an hour ahead. My test was around one o'clock, at one o'clock. I turned up at the exam center well, in the car park at a quarter past 11 or something like that, half, half an hour or uh, half 11. Um, and then I, I, I've been trying to get into meditation, so I tried to meditate. I did meditate for 15 minutes, and as soon as I finished meditating, I have put my phone into do not disturb mode, and just I zoomed into exam 
uh, center. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to think about anything else. Just just get in. Um, I went into there. I went in there. As I said, give yourself uh, plenty of time because they are going to be. There is a process of 20-25 minutes uh, with your uh, thumbprints, your palm print, your photograph. Your, you know, bloody bloody blah. Right. You can't carry anything else uh, into the exam apart from your ID and they will give you a notebook and a pen, just a notepad, not even a notebook, um, and uh, get in, right? So that's what happened. So I probably sat down at, at, at my, the computer screen um, around uh, around uh, half or 12 maybe. Um, I didn't know the time by this time because I can't wear anything. I left my bow watch and everything in the locker. Um, so first things first, when you sit down for the exam, when you're at the computer screen, right? This is Kevin Henry said, at the Firebrand Boot Camp, um, and it's very, very true. I have heard scary stories of people doing this. You will be presented with an NDA um, agreement on the screen, and that will only stay there for five minutes. And straight away, as soon as you sit down, accept it. As soon as you see that screen, accept it, right? That's it, accept it. If you want to read, you can read, right? I'm not saying anything against that, but accept it after five minutes your exam will be cancelled you you won't get your money back either right i have heard a couple of stories people let that um you know run out, run out time run out and their exam cancel you can't do anything you can't appeal nothing you can't do anything so um you know accept it because what happens is people trying to learn just you know before the exam or trying to remember something you know cryptography or uh, you know, annual risk assessment, the risk calculation, whatnot, right? Protocol, port numbers, or whatnot. They're trying to uh, remember something, and then as soon as they get there, uh, they, in front of the computer screen, they got the notepad. They want to dump everything they have in their head on the on that notepad. Meanwhile, the NDA uh, screen is timing out, right? That's the stuff. So you want to accept the NDA, and then you can do whatever you want to do. Got it? Well, I accept the NDA straight away. I had about three and a half minutes to go. By the time I actually went to the uh, screen, it was already one and a half minute over. I accepted it straight away, right? And then I got some, yeah, something asking about, do you want to start the exam? Next screen will be your exam and all that. I remember uh, Kevin saying there will be a small uh, tutorial p before you start the exam. That's what I thought. But when I clicked next, <laughs> First thing I see is first question of the CISSP exam, <laughs> right? And my timer was running three three hours, one hundred and eighty minutes, and it's it's counted and started, right? That's it. I saw the first question; it was okay. I thought I know the answer. I answered it. First four or five questions, I I was comfortable, and then it started. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. I did, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't 100% confident of any single answer after that. Uh, maybe, maybe there were a couple here and there, um, but I thought they were taking me. To, the exam was taking me to extreme, like hard. And then when I answered them, and then I was getting some kind of easy or, or straightforward questions. Um, uh, and at some point, right, um, I started worrying. I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, but before that. Try, uh, try to do 50 questions an hour. That's my advice, um, right? As soon as I sat down, I, I did the NDA, and then I, what I wrote down on my paper was, uh, on my uh, notepad was, I, I said, trust your judgment. I actually wrote down, trust your judgment. Think like a manager. Um, and I wrote down something else. Uh, and I wrote down 50 questions per hour. Um, not, nothing about te information, technical, management, what, nothing. I just wrote down these things, right? Just wanted to remind myself uh, and take breaks and all that, right? So 50 questions, but an hour into the exam, I only did 35 questions. So I was technically taking one and a half minute per question. And I, as I said, after five questions, I wasn't very confident about any answers. So I thought I was failing. And when I saw easy questions, or not, not easy questions, but straightforward questions, around 70 questions, 70 mark or something, I thought I definitely failed. Why would I see these straightforward questions or relatively easier questions? I definitely failed. 
So at this time, <laughs> I was preparing for 150 questions. I know I'm going to fail. Exam is going to ask me for 150 questions or definitely more than 100 questions. Uh, I need to time this very well. So when I looked at the timer, I had about um, 70 minutes and I was still, I have only done like 60 questions, <laughs> right? So if you think about it, I had 90, if I get 150 questions, I have 90 questions left, but I only have 70 minutes. So I really have to ramp up. So I was, um, yeah, I was trying to ramp up my efforts. Um, somehow while doing the practice test, I got into the habit of reading the question like twice or thrice. Twice is okay, recommendable, do the twice. Um, but I was reading, half, halfway through the question, I was reading thrice, and then halfway through, I was doing twice and thrice. I don't know why, but I was doing that. I was doing the same thing in the exam and I'm just, yeah, losing time. So for, for you, uh, if you ask me for my advice, I would say read the question once slowly, try to understand what they're trying to ask, and then read it again, and then uh, read the answers. If they're saying best or most, you know, you know the drill, right? There are more than one, one answer for the question, and then you have to pick the best, um, best answer, right? So um, that's happened. Weirdly enough, I thought there was one question. I thought they asked me twice, same question. I thought so. I, I, I don't know. But th it was very, very same, similar, very uh, exactly same, I thought. Um, but first question was in the first 15 minutes or so, and the other question was around uh, one and a half hour, after one and a half hour into the exam. So I can't, I can't really um, tell, but I thought it was the same, same question. Uh, yeah, um, anything else about the exam? Just time yourself, right? Time yourself. First 20, 25 questions, take time. Take one minute or two minute per question, because first 20 questions are going to first, or first five or 10 questions are going to define your how you're going to take your exam i believe and also please remember if you're getting 100 questions there are 25 questions that are not marked for the exam so they are testing you uh, but you don't know what they are so <laughs> i thought i figured one one question that's not because i the terminology they used i never heard out of all the books uh, books and videos i have seen and read so yeah mm, if you if you get something wrong, just, just, yeah, leave it, leave it behind. Whatever happens, just leave it behind. There were two questions I thought I answered and then I clicked next and I immediately I realized, oh, that was not the right answer. <laughs> but what can I do? You can't go back in the exam. So you just have to uh, move on. You know, that's past is past. You can't change it. Just, just move, move ahead. Um, and then at the 80, 85 questions, I, I had like 50 or 60 minutes. Um, and I, I was prepping for 150 and I thought I really need to ramp up. So I was literally reading the question only once and reading the answers and I just take, click, you know, tick, next, tick, next, tick, next. Uh, luckily, there were not huge, huge questions like scenario, you know, uh, all that. But, um, and I reached 100 questions. I was, as I said, I was expecting more questions. But when I clicked the answer for the 100th question, click next and the exam said your exam is finished go and get the report go and collect your report and stuff and I, this time I thought this point I thought oh man it's done uh, I, I'm, I failed I don't know how to show my face to my wife my daughter uh, my daughter is only three years old but she she was learning to tell congrats to me <laughs> right <laughs> So I and, and my mentor and, and a couple of friends, I, I, I said about the exam, I was thinking about all these things. What should I do if I fail? And I was, I was at that time, um, sure I was going to fail. And I walked out um, and I asked the lady, can I have the report? And she said, no, no, no. Our process is you have to empty the locker first and you have to show the ID, then I will show you the, uh, I'll give you the report. I can't, yeah. I said, can you even tell it's a good news or bad news? She said, no. Our, our policy is you can't, you can't do that. So, yeah, that was like, it's like 10 yards away, the locker, but that was the longest walk. Uh, I, 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 I took everything from the locker. I, it was only my jacket. I packed everything in my jacket. It was easy. And I, I gave her the ID and she actually folded the report, gave it to me. I had to open it. 
And then I opened, it was said, congratulations. I'm like, what the hell? I was literally screaming, shouting. I was crying, literally crying. Trust me. Um, yeah, thinking about this now, it gives me goosebumps, right? Um, I, months of preparation went into it. Uh, and it, it meant so much to me and my family, you know, they, they were really hoping I would walk past and everybody, my friends supporting. And for me as well, I don't, <laughs> I want to accomplish this, achieve this first. And the second thing is I don't want to do this again if I fail, right? So um, that's that. I, I know this is a long video, but I hope that has given you um, insight into what, what, what I did, how I passed. It is a tough exam, but you can do it. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, don't, just believe in yourself. Don't, don't give yourself any excuses. I don't have experience, I don't have this, I don't have that. Just forget about what you don't have. Uh, think about what, do, what you do have. Think about your strengths um, and just go for it. Um, there were, I think, a couple of areas I was really weak um, or, or domains when I was doing the practice test, like, you know, soft, SDA, software development and something else, cryptography uh, <laughs> or, 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 or uh, security engineering. Um, I was only scoring like 60, 65 percent. Um, but what I, de I decided to, I, I decided to revise them again. But I was still struggling with software development, I thought, you know, pff, whatever happens it's 10 percent of the exam um i know what the different testing types are and a few things like that so i'll probably ignore that bit <laughs> um i learn what i can learn and then you know so i'm not suggesting you do that but you know think about it um it's up to you what type of person you are how you can learn and as i said you can pass anybody can pass it right you can pass um make a plan Pick the resources and execute the plan, right? Commit. You have to commit. Otherwise, you can't do this. Commit your time. You have, if you have to give up your social stuff, give up. I, <laughs> I literally didn't have a drink for three months. The last time I drank was, uh, uh, I had a beer, was 25th of July. Um, so <laughs> I thought I was going to have a drink after my exam, but I didn't. I didn't want to ruin that. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, you know, you have make your priorities and, and, and go for it. You can, you can, you can do this exam. It's, it's doable. It's achievable. Uh, one of the important things uh, on the exam day, I forgot to tell you on the exam day, I, I watched Kelly Anderhan's video. I think twice I watched it. Kelly Anderhan's uh, video about why you will pass CISSP. Make sure you do that as well. Uh, absolutely on the exam day or day before the exam you watch Kelly Anderhan's video on YouTube why you will pass the ISSP you you will like it it will help you a lot um, I had a night before the exam I found this um, blog I can't remember what it is but I will link the PDF file or the link on in the description below it was about seven pages PDF um, the guy wrote something about how to remember uh, different like incident response stages and different different stuff IPsec and what and what not uh, OSI layer and all that um, it was it was useful uh, I thought I, I really like this drum roll for um, incident response <laughs> so anyway um, I hope that helps that's pretty much it um, but if you have a, if you if you have any further questions if you need any further information just um, leave the comments below. Uh, please don't ask me about what questions are what are there in the exam. Uh, it's not something I'm going to give you or I'm going to uh, discuss. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, I think. Um, yeah, anything else? I have made a video um, every day on the last three days before the before the exam, uh, including the exam day. So if you if you want to watch it, I will leave the link as well. Go and watch it. Um, yeah, I'm really chuffed. <laughs> if you can't tell, man, it's, it's super hard. It's super hard. But I did it, right? You can do it. Anybody can do it. Have a plan. Execute the plan. Ask for help. Thank you very much.